So if you wouldn't mind just sitting on my chaise long. <laughs> I thought you were going to say shoulders. That was going to say, oh, God, not acrobatics already. Uh, no, not acrobatics already. But welcome to the Lacey Therapy uh, Service. And um, if you think I'm bad, you've got Shane as well. Uh, I'm down in the... Uh, the. I'm down in the dumps. I don't wish to know about your dumps. And um, Every time you say Lacey, I always want to go underwear. But I'd, Oh, how hilarious is that? You... Do you think I've oh, never heard that in my many decades? I know. But I'm like Pavlov's dog now with to your Lacey. Do you know what I mean? Every time you shout Lacey, I come for my dinner. I can't well, help does myself. Does tongue, tongue start salivating? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to go there. But the last time someone attached knickers to Lacey, only verbally, they were about yeah. seven or eight years old. So I cut them some slack. I don't think you can be excused in the same way. I think we found my level. I think we should just stick with it. Well, thinking of your initials, I should think of socks, not knickers, when uh, you come along. Shane O'Connor, sock. Yes. Yeah. Well, you think it's all right for me. You think of me, poor old brother, Kieran. I mean, he has a terrible time. <laughs> anyway, shall we introduce the show proper? Um, welcome to the Comedy Sab. If it's your first time, a special warm welcome on your entry. I'm sounding like Julian Clary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, didn't he ask for a hand on his exit? But that was <laughs> only at the end of his show. Welcome to, welcome to our lazy entry. <laughs> I'm not a very worse. good therapist, am I? <laughs> I think I've broken the ethical rules. Uh, anyway, it's nice to have you along. And if you're a regular, not irregular, if you're a regular... <laughs> <laughs> Everything sounds scatological tonight. It's going to be one of those one of those mornings, evenings, afternoons, wherever in the world you are. Um, anyway, settle down now. And um, just to explain, if you haven't heard before, cover your ears if you've heard this before, but don't give up on the show just yet. Um, we put a different comedy each week on the slab of shame, or is it the slab of fame? That's what we're here to decide. Uh, we don't pretend to be comedy experts, but we do love our comedy, uh, unless it's really rank. Um, anyway, it's TV, radio or podcast, stroke other digital forms are available. And um, uh, and we prodded about a bit on said uh, virtual slab, the, uh, the marble of the comedy slab, and uh, see what we make of it. Uh, chew the fat, chew the cud, one of the two, and uh, some... Moments later, which seem like days uh, on some occasions, uh, we reach some kind of uh, decision each. Uh, we don't necessarily agree on things, although we have we have gone a bit weak recently. We have been mm. falling in rather mm. than falling out. Uh, anyway, we each uh, give uh, whatever the comedy of the week is, a score out of five, and then we uh, top those two scores up, making a score out of ten, and that's pretty much it. This week, slightly unusual because the show's only 15 minutes long. We have two shows, so two times 15. We tend to put a 30-minute, three-zero-minute type uh, comedy or a comedy at least that would have gone out, roughly speaking, in a half-hour slot. Um, this week, uh, because it's shorter shows, we have two episodes, episodes four and five of the 2019 season. I still can't work out what the series number is doesn't matter too much. The, the original transmission date, if that helps you find it, and it may do, depending on where you're looking, uh, it went out in September 2019, first time round, on BBC Radio 4, now on BBC Sounds, I think for some time to come, but I can't remember now, to be honest. So hurry, hurry, hurry. It is called How Does That Make You Feel? It is about therapy, or at least it's a comedy about therapy. Uh, in the first edition, which uh, first on the slab, which, as I say, is episode four, bizarrely, don't ask, uh, it's complicated. Uh, Tim McInerney is uh, playing uh, a, a client, really, on the uh, on the chaise long. Um, and then we have Roger Allen to look forward to in uh, episode five. So I guess we'll do them in that order and we get a we'll listen to an, an audio clip. Uh, one from each of those shows. That's nice and straightforward, at least. Um, mm. And uh, look forward to playing that in in a bit. Um, but first off, uh, we've got some comedy news. And uh, it really, this is one that has gone beyond the... Uh, in terms of reach of the story, how widespread it is, uh, it's gone beyond the, the usual comedy specialist sites hasn't it onto your actual mainstream mm. media media which is um yeah. jimmy carr's uh joke uh, if indeed you are happy to call it a joke some people don't really see it that way 
um, certainly delivered in the form of a joke. And uh, we're not going to repeat the potential offence, um, but it is, uh, it you know, it's heavy duty stuff about the the Holocaust. And I think he used the uh, the G word, the Gypsy word, did he not? Mm, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was about uh, about gypsies during during the Holocaust and their like persecution and uh, and uh, murder during the uh, the Holocaust. Um, I, do you know? I mean, leaving all that aside, and I'm not trying to trivialise all the you know the subject matter mm. itself, but I think the wider question that keeps cropping up and we can't really get to grips with the answer is is whether whether this is the role of comedy or whether this is the right of comedy to travel down this path of offending people. Um, and then if you don't travel down that, like if you're if you go to the lowest common denominator of offence, because I have to say, I mean, I don't know about you, but I. I can't really recall ever being offended by comedy. Can you? I think I can, but then I'm, I've got thinner skin than you, love, haven't I? T tell me then. Come on, tell me what. Can you remember what it was that offended you? Because I'm, I'm curious about it. Well, really... it might have been in my religious days, so um, that, that goes back quite some time. But so, so I've always mm. got that in mind because I know what it felt like to be offended. <laughs> it wasn't that Archbishop of Canterbury <laughs> joke from Barry Cry, was it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, no, absolutely not. And uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, just spool back uh, a couple of weeks. I mean, see, maybe I, I wonder at the two of us, and perhaps people can tell us at some point, I wonder at the two of us who is the minority view and who is the majority view out of those two views, because I can honestly say um, even, you know, having Irish heritage mm. um, and, and to draw parallels, I suppose, um, you know, making jokes about the uh, Irish potato famine or... Um, you know, the Easter Rising or, or you know, a, a myriad of other things that go back through Irish history um, that could have the possibility to cause offence. I've, I've never, ever been offended by comedy because I've always taken the view that um, if it's something I don't like, then I'll switch it off. Now, I've avoided Jimmy Carr for, for quite a period of time because I, I found his, um, his comedy very basic. And then I started seeing clips of him. I think it was on uh, eight out of 10 cats, which I don't, I can't, I don't like those kind of programs. Um, but they were just like showing jokes or roasts to people. Mm. And I thought, Oh, actually maybe, maybe I'm doing him an injustice and perhaps, and then I saw some of his stand up and I thought, Oh, maybe it's not as bad as I thought he was. So n not in the sense of being offended, but I just thought, oh, it's just not for me. I don't find that funny. And I, and I don't, I kind of don't get why the, the, that can't be the solution to it, is if you don't like it, you don't watch it. You know, you've got to have free speech, haven't you, surely? Is that, well, is that something we agree on? Yes, except we don't have free speech, do we? There is such a thing as the law of libel, which is, which is quite vicious in this country, where you can actually end up in court and out of pocket, even if you're in the right. That's how vicious it is. What I'm saying is about whether comedy has this right to to offend them and I, and I just i just don't get i mean maybe i just don't feel strongly enough about any issue and that's what it is and you know that i don't but i, I really and i know lots of people who feel the same as me and i say are you offended by the kind of i just switch it off if i don't like what it. about stepping back a generation to your dad now yeah you mentioned good that's a good point yeah Liz. you mentioned some absolute huge tragedies in irish history but but mm. one of the rolling tragedies of my youth for Irish people in uh, outside of Ireland, wh whether you were North or South, Republic or, or Northern Ireland, uh, was just this omnipresent joke about Irish people not being very bright. Um, yeah. Surely that caused I mean, offence to your dad coming over. No, he always, he always used to say, um, I think I've told you this before, but I, I forgive you for not remembering. I wasn't it, listening. It, but it, and it all God rest his soul. It always used to make me laugh because I used to think, oh, you know, he'd either nicked it off somebody or it's a great line. But he always used to say, if somebody told him an Irish joke, he'd go, oh yeah. But he said, why are Irish jokes so daft? He said, so the English can understand them. Oh yeah, and, I've, and I've that, heard a, a, a different version of yeah. that. And that, and so, but I mean, he was, you know, I mean, he was a a, 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 a very religious man himself. He was quite a devout Catholic, um, and 
as far as I could tell, never had a bad bone in his body as long as he, in the 90 years that he, that he lived on this earth. And, and I've never seen him get upset. He just, he just used to laugh. And then, you know, he'd say to me, oh, he's a pillock, isn't he? You know, whatever. But it, it was never, it wasn't, maybe that's where I get it from. He was but never. You, you, are you sure that wasn't a cover for being at some level, maybe quite a deep level, hurt? No, because, I mean, he'd sit and watch the Dave Allen show who used to relentlessly take the pee out of the Pope, for a start, and mm. bishops and cardinals and whoever else. I had else no idea the Pope was Irish. No, Catholic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. Um, Do okay, you know what I mean? Well, and, so, and, so, and there's an Irishman doing it, but, but I, I, he never... Well, maybe, maybe that gave him legitimacy, an Irishman taking the rise out of the Pope. Okay, well, we'll park that there, uh, probably with no resolution, but... Um, uh, I was deeply offended by some of the things you said, so that's progress, I suppose. Yeah, sure, big sort. nose. <laughs> you're just saying that because you're not Irish. What do you mean people aren't eating enough cheese? <laughs> you're not even fully Irish. I mean, I make your mind up, mate. Uh, okay, and I speak as a, a quarter Scotch. Um, right, moving swiftly on. We turn to the show on the slab, and the first question to ask you is what your reaction was, Shane, when I set this homework last week. And I guess even stepping back from that, I need to know first, Did you, a first question really is, had you heard of the show before? No, no. It's not, it's not what I'd come across before. Well, I'd kind of heard of it, I'd, I'd tell a lie, but it's not, what I'd, uh, it's not what I'd delved into. I'm pretty certain I am. Although, when I started to listen to it, I'm thinking, did I? How queer. Oh, no. All right, let's park that there then. And just to say, well, just to um, recap, really, it, it is a show about um, therapy. The therapist, uh, her character name is Martha, and she's played by Frances Tomalty, not known to me, not by name, but then I'm hopeless with names and not very good with actors. <laughs> The show is written by Sheila Stevenson, uh, who has had a number of things to put on in the theatre, amongst other art forms. And uh, it's produced and directed by Owen O'Callaghan, who could just be Irish, but that, that's a terrible stereotyping on my part. Um, OK, well, let's lead into the first clip. So this one will be from that uh, episode four with the person you didn't identify, Shane, mm. uh, namely uh, Tim McInerney, which I always think is a double act, McInerney. I mean, it's, it's a classic, isn't it? But he's only playing one person, so it's not a double act at all. He's playing Philip, and he's had a bit of a revelation as he explains to his therapist, Martha. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, my news. All the fabulous things that have been happening to me, as well as looking 15 years younger. So... The big news is, I've ditched my medication. All of it. Right. Did you take medical advice before you did this, Philip? Do you know, sometimes you sound exactly like my mother. Or worse, Rose. No, I didn't take medical advice. I didn't need to. I simply listened to my own body. And I felt, in my heart, it was urging me to renounce the devil. Uh, sorry. No, I don't mean that literally. I mean, it was telling me to refuse to ingest any more chemicals. Because, I don't mean to boast, but I'd just made a rather remarkable discovery. Off my own bat. I'm astonished no one else has come up with it. Anyway, suffice to say, I am now medication-free. I'm following an alternative course of treatment, and I feel 300% better for it. I see. Well, that's... Uh, what is this alternative treatment? Alcohol. I'm sorry. Sounds like a plan, to be honest with you. He, um, he, uh, he, he kept slipping into. I kept thinking, oh, it's Michael Fenton Stevens. Oh no, it's not. Uh, anyway, headline is, mm. um, and I've gone for the obvious. I'm afraid. How does that make you feel? Sadly, uh, exhausted. Oh uh, dear. I was I... absolutely knackered by the time <laughs> I finished this, and not it's so only much fifteen the, minutes. Not yeah, but not so much the first one, but the second one uh, with Roger Alamin. Was, really? I thought it was, I was, it was a breathtaking pace. It really was. I, th I thought, um, pace of delivery, word rate. I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, we'll talk more about this, but I kind of felt like it really needed a script editor to, to put a bit of, put a bit of space in there, a bit of room to breathe in there. But I found it like just relentless, really, to be honest with you. Um, 
Funny you say that. I mean, I we'll we'll hear a clip, uh, obviously, from the Roger Allen uh, episodes in uh, a little while. I felt in that one, I don't know whether it would answer your problem, not necessarily, but I felt if there should be space, it should be filled by, or should there should be a space opened up for the therapist. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, because that a, is the point of therapy. You're right. But, well, no, it isn't actually, and this well, is obviously quite, the joke is that he keeps talking. Um, n- no, I think particularly the Alan character. This the therapist is not a psychiatrist, whereas a psychiatrist will talk to you. A therapist, it is all about. It is about talking. It's about listening. It's about letting the person talk and you listening. So that is, it is accurate. But you wouldn't go there if if the therapist had nothing to say. Then that would be an entire waste of money up in smoke. That's exactly what it is. They say very little because the whole idea is to get you to talk and to expand on your own ideas. They don't. The, the whole idea isn't to suggest anything or to um, to to find solutions or anything like that. That kind of talking therapy is about you talking so it is quite accurate that actually in fairness but so what kind of therapy did you have that you're so uh authorized to speak on this topic no i i didn't but i i just looked into being a therapist and i thought oh i couldn't keep that quiet for that length of time so but um, what were you reading is there's so many different types of therapy yeah this well this was this was um um uh not psychiatry this is um um what's the other one um psychotherapy yeah yeah Psy- like a like psychotherapy rather therapy. than psychiatry yeah psychotherapy Where well i abs- don't agree i absolutely don't agree yes there's listening but there is a uh, talking about the therapist anyway i mean it it, it gets to the point where he is it, it just becomes a monologue with uh, roger allen but mm. there are elements that i enjoyed in that um so can we find any saving grace in it at all you, you sound I mean, exhausted. I do. I, I mean, I do, and the, the irony is that I do very much like, and I think it's it's a wonderful thing if it's done right. Is eavesdropping, and I think I think that's that's within human nature, isn't it? This idea that you're listening to it as a fly on the wall, as it were, is very attractive. I don't know. I mean, you could say all radio is eavesdropping, couldn't you? Uh, all speech radio, to some extent. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean it's it's that kind of it, it it it's rather than a presentation. It's the difference between a presentation like a play, where there are multiple characters in there, and and this kind of just like this conversation that's happening. I, I to me, I always feel that there's a difference between the two. But like I say, maybe it's just maybe it's my own fetish. I don't know. But um, I mean, I was disappointed by a number of things, like the old, you know, the the. Um, Tim McInerney they're playing the vain male TV star mm. you know it's like oh come on give me a break it's like in fact Michael Fenton Stevens uh, played a, a very similar character in Trevor's World of Sport um, we've seen that kind of character in Drop the Dead Donkey and you kind of think oh this is it's all it was very cliched for me I don't I don't know whether you had that feeling at all but um uh, I tell you, the, the problem I had was that uh, there's a passing reference to it because uh, these are ongoing characters. As, as uh, Certainly the Roger Allen one is, I believe, mm. uh, Tim McInerney is likewise. I know what you're going to say. But, well, it's assuming a bit too much knowledge, I think. No, I was going to... S- what do you think I'm going to say? Good morning, oh, East Anglia. Yes. Who does that remind us of? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's another stereotype. We can barely get through a... Uh, even half a comedy slab without referencing Mr. Partridge, and um, but but yeah, it, it you do think oh that's a cliche, isn't it? Well, it's it's have someone who sounds like they live in Surrey and went to a posh school, <laughs> have them out in, uh, in Norwich or East Anglia, and uh, subtext they they're a failure. The other thing is he's a demonstrator of um, kitchen appliances in Peter Jones. It could be an awful lot worse. I mean, Peter Jones, I think, is an aspirational place to demonstrate I kitchen appliances. I know, I know. I, they, they wouldn't take my application, but um, didn't stop me trying half a dozen times. And you brought your own appliances, didn't you? Although none of them were from the kitchen. <laughs> well, not, not necessarily from the kitchen, which from, was... from the dungeon. Um, <laughs> which, but but, but it might be you'd wiped them all down beforehand. It's not as if you'd like, you know. <laughs> oh, please. You're not as if you'd come hot foot. And that, and that was a pre-COVID age where you didn't exactly. have to wipe things down. Exactly, yeah. Um, anyway, right, but be that as it may, um 
I had, I think there's an elephant in the room we're not addressing, and it's an alcoholic elephant. Apologies for the spoiler, uh, which we have spoiled. But, um, I mean, that takes us into the idea that someone comes off medication, prescribed medication, mm. and goes on alcohol as though, as though they'd never had it before. And so it, it's, a, it's an, a revelation to them what it does to them. And he's in middle age, and he's... You know, coming back to the TV presenter, I don't want to slam into it because it, I'm sure it will has found its audience. But at the same time, I think, well, if you're going to do that, you you are. It's our old friend, the S word, surreal. It's gone off the scale to me to anything that's remotely believable. <laughs> anyway, let's hear a, a clip from the episode five of whatever this series is that they were putting out in September 2019. Um, that's uh, another category problem but anyway um for me the the joy of this character it, well there are many things i think roger allen does despair but comic despair like nobody else uh i've got a feeling you're not going to agree uh, on any level with me on this show but um uh, he plays an mp richard fallon which i realize now uh, can also be mispronounced fallen or fall a fallen mp maybe fallen yeah um he is, you know, he's he's not at the top table. He's not at the cabinet table, uh, whatever his roots are. But he, uh, yet another person with, um, I think, a, a failed marriage behind him. But he has got a, a son living under his roof. Sounds like a teenager, I'm guessing. Uh, maybe older teens because he's out at work now. Um, and so he starts, uh, well, that's that's the Toby reference towards the uh, beginning of this clip. So this is uh, uh, Roger Allen uh, in episode five of How Does That Make You Feel? And he plays, uh, as I say, the MP Richard Fallon. Toby says the problem is we're getting contradictory messages which are mutually incompatible. God, that boy. Sometimes I think he should be running the country. At other times, of course, like when he stockpiled all that golden syrup, I'm very relieved he's not. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, the thing is, you can't have a culture based on selling us things we never knew we wanted but suddenly can't live without, whilst at the same time telling us we have to stop buying absolutely everything or the world will end. It's enough to make even the sanest amongst us feel unmoored. Who are we supposed to listen to? Where can we go for help and advice for a solution? Not politicians, that's for sure. I mean, you know... I am one, and I'm here to tell you that most of us have absolutely no idea what we're doing. We're just moving from one deck chair to another on the Titanic, whilst fondly believing we're masters of the universe. I mean, I've never been what anyone would call a top-flight political operator, have I? I'm way, way down the food chain, always have been. And you know what? One of my constituents told me the other day she thought I was beginning to look like part of a lost golden age. I almost kissed her. You promised me Roger Allen, and you delivered a 15-minute drama from Woman's Hour. Um, <laughs> I d but both were true. Yeah, they were, strangely enough. I mean, if I don't know how you've done it. I still don't, to be honest with you. It was a sleight of hand, I think. Um, yeah. It's really weird because, I mean, I used the word relentless a little bit earlier, but when you listen to it in isolation like that, over mm. over like a minute or so, how long was that? About a minute and ten, was it? Something? Just a, Yeah, just a few seconds over. It, it doesn't. It doesn't feel as driven as it does when you listen to the whole fifteen minutes. That's the problem I've got. And mm. the the point you made about more interjection from the therapist. I mean, there was a point there where he said, "Oh, where 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 was I?" Which would have been a great point at which you could have written in some kind of to and fro with the therapist, couldn't you? Mm. Am, am I being too simplistic about it? just just even to just give it a bit of space? Even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't take the story or the narrative on anywhere, just to give it a bit of a break and just a to, of just to, yeah, a bit a bit of room to breathe. Uh, yes, it, it certainly needs that. I I don't know that maybe that part you suggested the place is maybe too obvious. If it had been written in, we might be complaining about that. Right. Um, I just love hearing Roger Allen's voice. Um, I've never heard him in anything other than in, in character, so I'd be interested to, to uh, hear him in interviews. If he does interviews, some actors don't because they don't want you to hear them um, when they're out of character. They want you to 
you know, only accept them as the characters they play. Um, yeah, so you you obviously weren't uh, taken in the same way I was by the the comic despair. I've just come off the back of listening to the whole series back to back, and I don't I don't mean like in one go, but I mean when I was in the car or when I'm doing stuff and I've, I've got it on my phone of cabin pressure, which quite heavily features Roger Allen. And mm. when I listen to him in something like that, which is uh, recorded in front of a, a studio audience and he has supporting actors around him, I f- and I don't know the guy, but he sounds like he has much more belief in, in something like cabin pressure than he does in that. And I don't, I don't think he delivers that script with any real conviction i don't think he's bought into it at all and i don't i don't think it's and i think you know and i've watched him in the thick of it on tv and you know this like you say this guy is and you know he, he does the voice for the kids program sarah and duck which i to be honest with you i see more of him doing that <laughs> now but you know um but you really just, have to show it to your kids if I anyone did, no no i've sent to bed i don't know i to get in the way and start shouting and you it's know and trying to join pleasure. in it's yeah nightmare mm. um and I, I don't know. I just didn't feel that. I didn't feel that he'd bought into it at all. Did you? Did you get any sense of that or not? No. It's it. I, I got the reverse that my, most of the time that, that wouldn't have even occurred to me. It's just listening more closely to that minute. There was a bit where it was. I, I don't know whether it was actually that bit. There's a slight loss of conviction. If I was being very fussy, um, maybe that line. Now, where was I? Um, but I don't know. That that m- might be my mood, and if I heard it another time, um, particularly on another day, uh, yeah. it might not worry me at all. Um, but but no, I just find his voice so luxurious. I just want to uh, immerse myself in it. So I didn't have the problem that you had in terms of uh, whatever phrase you used. Uh, the relentless, wasn't it? The, the word. Yeah. Relentless. I mean, and, um, and couple that again with again. You know, we're talking. There's a, there's a high degree of of uh, obviousness about the whole thing. You know, the the white male MP who's uh, having reservations about his career and, and all that. And you kind of think, I'm not. I'm not hearing anything new. And more sadly, I didn't hear very much. Very funny. I mean, did you? I think it's it's obviously not written to have an, an audience, so it's not set up, set up, massive punchline. No. Uh, as you would for a sitcom with a, 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 a live studio audience. Um, I'd say it's more witty than funny. Um, I think there were a couple of moments where I, was, I sort of chuckled, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I didn't, I don't come to this type of show with the, these energy levels expecting a big Gaffors, um, but I mean, at the, enough. the end of the f- the the first one we listened to, the end of episode four, and and the therapist says, "I wonder if I should call social services." And I, and I just thought, wow, it's just really, you know, you had the opportunity there to put something in that could have left you feeling on a high, despite all of the, you know, the, mm. the previous fourteen minutes. Um, well. I- Firstly, I, I haven't mentioned that, but the, it is top and tailed by the sort of interior monologue of of the therapist, mm. um, which is what you're referring to, the, the, the end one there. I found myself, this is, speaks volumes about me, I was chewing over, you know, would I call social services or is it a 999 job? Or um, And, and I, I went through all the authorities in my head and decided uh, I'd, I'd find British gas in the end. No. Did you... Did you um, <laughs> <laughs> but you got a new boiler out of it, so yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, and a, and a hive app. Uh, how um, weird that you you were doing that, and in in the second episode, the Roger Allen episode we were listening to, I mm. towards the end was starting to worry because I hadn't heard him breathe for so long. In between the words, I'm thinking, "Come on, Roger, breathe." An editing thing, perhaps. Breathe. I don't. I don't know, mm. but I just. I, I don't know, or I don't know whether because I was listening on headphones, so you could hear it quite. Acutely, and I'm thinking, come on, Rog, breathe. You can do it. Come on, Rog. Stay <laughs> with us, If you're thinking that, yeah, you're not wrapped up in the drama, are you, as such? That's that's the problem, is that, is that I mean, and again, you know, did it really go anywhere? Like you say, you had a few chuckles. That's that's two more than I had, two or three more than I had. <laughs> but also, I, 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 it, it's in the nature of the thing that, for me, it doesn't have to go anywhere. 
Um, and anyway, it's like a soap opera in that it needs to be left. Uh, well, they don't go for a, a big cliffhanger, but it's it's left. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off. Yeah. But I still I still don't know. And I had a, a bigger problem with the, the Tim McInerney one, as I'm saying, um, in terms of you know how surreal am I meant to accept it? What level am I coming uh, expected? What's it? What's is it? What's the aim of it? Wh- yeah. Where am I meant to join it? And uh, Roger Allen, I, I don't find that same question haunting me. And um, it's not me having to go at Tim McInerney, but uh, uh, something I just relax when I hear Roger Allen's voice. Ah, right, okay. Uh, and those other questions don't worry me in the same sense. And 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 in the same way, you kind of think: is it because you know it's it's, it's because that um, he's he's a, a white male that it's all rather funny that he's come off his medication and started to to drink. Whereas if it was um, a, a woman in an abusive relationship, it would be far from funny. Do you know what I mean? It's that. Well, you're, kind you're of, saying it's not funny anyway, but I know the. I understand the question. You know the, that um, level of acceptability of uh, of um, portraying some people as victims and others as not. Um, they're, they're just um, uh, caricatures of themselves, as it were. I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm not into that kind of thing. But but that's the argument that gets thrown the other way, and I kind of think it's only fair to throw it back in that direction and say, well, if, you know, is it, is it because the, who the character is that it's okay to to write that and we think it's funny? Well, you don't. But um, I, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm not here to answer for the playwright, but it, it, he says trying to answer for the playwright. Well, it, I, it's I'm, anyone, is it? Or the broadcaster. Sorry to interrupt, but or the broadcaster <laughs> or any or anybody who's allowed it to go on because, you know, they, they've said, yeah, it's obviously yeah that's okay. Change. Yeah. I wonder if it's it's the the defence would be. I'm not expecting this for a moment to satisfy you. I'm just thinking out loud whether the defence is it's the pomposity, um, take gender out of it. But I I can't remember now. You mention it. Um, obviously, we've got a female psychotherapist, um, but I I can't remember a, a female character in the chair. But then I don't claim. You know, I'm doing quite well to have heard two episodes of this show. Yeah, I know. And there are, more, I, I, two I more ask for you. others to be yeah. taken into account. Um, <laughs> so you know, I'm not my usual Unitarian on this, yeah. which makes me. Um, yeah, but I don't recall the ones I've heard. But with that rider, that the, there are plenty I haven't, as as usual. I, I hate to do it. And, uh, oh, you love to do it. Whatever no, it is, you're enjoying it. I can tell. I don't know. I hate to do it because <laughs> because you've said we do it every episode, and and it's just purely what I'm listening to at the moment. I, I was listening to um, a little bit of the uh, I Partridge. We need to talk about Alan, the, the Alan Partridge <laughs> book. You know, he's written his. his own book. Right. I was listening to a bit of that in an audio book the other day, and it just struck me. And I just thought, there's more character depth in like there's two more and a half to Alan three minutes of that than than mm. and and not just the same old same old repeating the same old stuff that we think we know about alan but like revealing new angles of what we <laughs> thought we knew. it's so comp and so clever the writing mm. and i kind of think if you're gonna need if you're gonna want this to stand up and to and to to work on its own you've you've got to be at that level you've got to be able to write like that i think personally I would be interested to see uh, some of the uh, the, the writers' um, works for the stage, um, but I'm not sure how often uh, how easy they are to find. I'm terrible at uh, not going to the theatre enough, but that would be interesting to know um, if, in another context, uh, she'd have much more complex characters. Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? The, the the idea that you can have uh, complexity in a person who superficially might seem oh well they're, they're just up themselves and there's not much going on but you're absolutely right with uh, uh, ditto with oast house um the audible so-called podcast which isn't a podcast mm. only ours is a real podcast but um uh, <laughs> which we collectively think is uh, uh is some of the finest writing around uh, ap mr partridge and we've heard I mean, and and like I say, it's it's also the delivery as well. But I, I did, I do wonder, and there was part of me that thought, and you mentioned the stage. I think that's a really good, that's a really good point. Is that I do wonder whether, if this was on the TV, or if this was on the stage, 
whether then you would have because you have the visual aspect of it you would then have the ability to say okay let's let's slow this down let's space it out let's take some stuff out let's let's let it breathe mm. because because you can can't you on tv it's a different or in, in theater because you've got that visual side of it as well so you know yeah. maybe to be fair maybe that that's that maybe would where it would work better uh, it could well do um, I'm trying to think, uh, just as I can't remember actors' names, I can't remember the name of plays either, but I saw a play about uh, um, a musician, composer. Oh, gosh, no, this, is, this, this can't end well. But essentially, that had, as part of it, a, a recurring, you, you, you see them in a therapeutic situation. But that wasn't um, going for laughs, but it was a very convincing um, therapist. It's a rich area because the, the potential there is just massive, isn't it? You know, to, to delve into someone's life in, in, a, in a way that gets much deeper than conversations in pubs generally do. Although, I mean, I don't know whether it changes now, and I, like I can only speak for myself, and you know, I know you have different experiences and other people have different experiences listening to this, but it's not something that I've um, ever... Uh, avail myself of um fortunately um so it's a world that i kind of only through self-investigation I, I know more about than i would ordinarily um you say fortunately there might be riches there you're denying yourself yeah it could be yeah well i mean fortunately is that i never felt that i had a need to seek it as a as a help can, can we vote for you to you know like you can vote someone out of the big brother house can we vote for you to go into therapy if you if you pay for it i, <laughs> I mean i'm I could sure do, we could have a whip round or go fund me i've got two kids <laughs> under five i'm glad to let the rest to be honest with you i mean the chance of a lie down would be an absolute <laughs> godsend <laughs> i think before we get into child neglect issues and i have to phone social services <laughs> for all the wrong reasons um let's score it out of five each uh, where do you stand on this caruthers it's a one for me. Oh, <laughs> it was sounding like you might, you know, out, dig deep for generosity at least to one and a half. Against half for Tim McInerney and uh, <gasps> half, half for Roger Allen. And, and, yeah, but honestly, that has to be out of two and a half each. I couldn't, and, and I don't hate on it at all. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't mean that in any kind of malicious way. And I didn't you know if the person who's written it You're is just naturally think, malicious. You don't yeah, have to you, try to how be. Can, how can you not be malicious <laughs> with that? But I'm not, I, I don't hate on it at all. I mean, it's something I've tried, I've listened to. I wouldn't be going back um, because, well, for all the reasons, really, that mm. we've talked about. What about yourself? I, I'm a bit torn, but I, the, the figure of three out of five, I'm not going to break it down into, into the two, uh, in between the two episodes, but um, three out of five acknowledges, I think there, there's some, there's, I think there's plenty to love in there, or if not love, then to like. And I, I'm, as we always do, I'd always recommend having a listen. Uh, uh, you would not be wasting your time. I don't think you will, uh, well, you know, since you've laid the ground shall we say, you put, you've set the bar quite low for people's expectations. I think a lot of people will be pleasantly surprised. That's my poisonal view. But give it a go. And um, as I say, for me, Roy, uh, Roy, Roger Allen, a particular pleasure. I didn't realise till I saw him on the telly that, that, that uh, he was a singer as well and back in the day was in Les Mis. Mm. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, an all-round talent. Uh, so three out of five from me. One, a paltry one from you, making that a four out of ten. Oh, you did say we were agreeing too much, so maybe that's the cure for it now. <laughs> I've I've cursed it, haven't I? I've jinxed and, it. And uh, thanks to the the uh, unique way that the BBC is funded. Good <laughs> good luck trying to find an episode that you can listen to. Because <laughs> uh, although having said that, and I know a lot of people do, and I do this, I must admit it's it's my godsend because I love audio books and I love audio comedy, as you probably gather. That's why I'm sitting here. Mm. Um, I notice Audible. You can actually buy um, for one credit. Uh, which you get if you, I think it's about seven pound a month or something like that, and I get I get like a, a credit a month. Um, for one credit, you can get ten ep uh, the first ten series, rather not ten episodes, the first ten series of this uh, for one credit on uh, on Audible. If you do want to actually stick your hand in your pocket and um, 
And, do, and it, if you sign up to Audible, I think you can get a, a free trial where you get so many free credits as well, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. You'll have to check it. But, yeah. Mm. So. Nice one. But I see it on BBC Sounds, certainly within the UK and quite possibly outside, um, the episodes we've slabbed are available for over a year as we speak. So what have you got for me, Sweet Cheeks, next oh, week? I'm going old school, baby. And no way. Yeah, man. I'm going old school, but not that old. I'm going old, but not that old, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> if I said I to I'm you... I'm a clue, but carry on. Yeah. If I said to you, I'm taking you back to before the lads who gave us porridge gave us porridge, would you know what I was talking about? Uh, no, but I know who we were talking about, Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenny. Two fine, fine writers. And I... Actually, and, Highly recommend their joint autobiography, actually, if you ever get the chance. Oh, yes, to yes. Very good. Imagine you and me trying to write a joint joint, joint I can imagine you and I trying to smoke a joint, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but, but you know, that's... Oh, I wouldn't know which end to... Uh... Anyway. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, well, I'm sure I know. Well, um, damn it, it's annoying me. Um, I don't think we've got the time for me to search my memory banks. But I'm certainly not uh, Googling it. Not yeah. cheating, you can tell. Um, I'm, I'm more au fait with what they went on to do, but even that's a bit hazy. I mean, ultimately, they went to make commercials in the States, didn't they? Or, yes, they did, yeah. They, in fact, I think they still live in the States, the pair of them, actually, I think. Right, but they did come back, uh, come back for a sort of one-off um, West End show, I think, a, I think, uh, I think they years come back. back. come back to get their mail, I think, basically, <laughs> and, the, and that's about probably it. Probably right, open the doors, probably jammed. Anyway, uh, relieve me and the audience of the suspenders. All right, I'll give you in one. I'll give you one clue, and you'll get it from this. You ready? I'm it's Eddie. Terry That's and not Bob. Much of a... Terry and Bob. Yeah. You said oh, I'd I get you, it. I thought you'd get it for there. Sorry. Uh, not Terry and June. <laughs> no. <laughs> not um... Terry Collier and Bob Ferris. No, clearly uh, passed me by. Whatever happened to the lot? Oh, well, I very nearly said that because it sounded like you were coming in from that direction. You said the you used the word lads, I think, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, I should have picked up on that. Damn. Whatever, gonna, whatever happened to the like I lads? don't remember their character names, as you can gather, but uh, it's a recurring theme. Okay. Well, I just thought, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I always th was think these are fascinating, not only because of the, the humour or what's funny at the time and all that sort of stuff, but kind of how well they travel through time mm. um, and how, you know, how well they stand up nowadays um, is, is something I always kind of, find fascinating so yeah whatever happened to the likely lads uh dick clemens and ian lafrenet um series one episode six entitled birthday boy birthday boy that's your own work for next week thank you very much i look forward to it and we look forward to you recommending us to other types that you may know whether they're work types family types stereotypes monotypes uh, archetypes and i could go on but anyway get the word out there if you be so kind uh, we'll love you for that and they will too and on anti-social media on twitter we are at comedy slab naturally enough do follow us there i'm still chuckling at uh, spencer jones uh, going to the dentist in the guise of herbert clunkadunk you'll find a link to that uh, amongst other tweets on our account and uh, it's the same handle at comedy slab our facebook page if you could like that would be wonderful and lastly a uh, nice uh, generous star rating on Apple Podcasts, stroke iTunes, and a uh, little bit of blurb too. Wonderful. Mwah! Thank you kindly. Stereotypes? You forgot that? That was another one as well. I think I did say that. Did you stereotypes, say stereotypes? Then I said monotypes. Uh, I, mi yeah. I missed out gerotypes. Oh, oh. It's all getting too highfalutin for me. All uh, highfalutin. Don't forget if you uh, if you want to catch us. We always say if you want to catch us uh, <clears throat> on your favourite uh, podcast. Um, grabber then uh, by all means do so <laughs> that the but, term. but bear in mind it's it's nicer for us if you do Spreaker uh, we love that uh, just because that's, we, we can get some money off that <laughs> and um, well, I don't want to be crass yeah, about baby, it yeah, well, well, but also yeah. the other thing is as well we can tell a lot more about where people are listening how they're listening how much they're listening to we can't see them in the bath we should make that clear no no although if you pay extra <laughs> I, 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 you can see us in the bar. You can see us. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, not one person has taken us up on that offer. No, it's strange. Pound, you know. Give it time. Give it time. 
podcast. <laughs> but you can catch us in other places, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, you name it, we is there. Oh, there'll be correspondence. Um, okay, well, that just about wraps it up. I've got to get back in the bath and um, I think uh, titivate a certain area so that it creates more bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> a man has his pride. Oh, dear. Just think of poor old wrinkly Adrian there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know. Not so oh. much of the... Uh, no, actually, you're right on both counts, really. I don't know what you do with that loofah, but uh, I'm just glad that you do. That's the main thing. <laughs> They don't call me the bath chap for nothing. <laughs> <laughs>